Hello and welcome to this video about the Rotel RCD991 Audiophile Edition. Uh, I used to have standard 991 which I bought when I went fully balanced. I bought myself Electro Company pre and power amps and um, once I connected them with balanced XLR cables it just uh, blew my mind. It was just a different experience altogether. So I decided to get a CD player. I went for the cheapest one, Cambridge Audio, but they're all broken down. All the dealers in my town had a uh, faulty batch. So the next one up was a Rotel, which was I bought it for $1,100, I think in 2000. And they were 1400 retail price. Uh, it is a remarkable player in many uh, areas, uh, as far as quality of parts mainly. What we have here, it's a HD CD, as you see there's a light on, and in here we have this uh, Pacific Microsonics um, PMD100 chip. There we have a dither button, which says it's set to 4, it goes from 0, which is no dither, to 7. Everybody says that 4 is the best, but I've never met I played it to many people, nobody ever heard any difference between any of the settings. Reviewers, however, somehow can. And let's come to the insides. Um, in here we have um, pretty ordinary Sony KSS 2 and 3 laser, but the rest of the parts is good. Other than those Pacific Microsonic chips, we have two Burr Browns PCM63. At the time, these were probably the best duct chips you could get. Some Nihicon caps, but not many ordinary ones, just a few. You know, there's one here, one there. These are Nihicon Great Supply, those big ones. All the black ones are Rubicon Black Gate. These are Nihikon's fine gold, and that there are uh, Nihikon Muse. Uh, the Rima um, capacitors are, are there also. That is about it. I mean, it's very nicely laid out and well made, but I see no difference between this, the audiophile edition, and the one that I used to have. I mean, uh, well, the only difference really I see, although it cannot be, uh, I, the picture is not of high enough resolution because it was taken, you know, um, many years ago. But uh, the op amps here are NE5534 and OPA 2604, whereas in this player we have, um, let, me, let me get a closer look, um, OPA. 2132 and also OPA, these are 132 and these are 2132, so single and double op amps. But surely you wouldn't call it an audiophile edition just because of different op amps. Um, the actual crystals, I've heard the crystals will change, I see no difference, looks similar. Somebody said that these were K versions in mine. They're not K's, they are PHL, but the, 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 the final letter is P. So, if anybody knows about those things, please tell me if there are any other differences. Now, let me show you though how well this player works. And for that, let me play you a kilohertz tone, but unlike normally we'll see what uh, what performance you can get out of them uh, and we'll look at my noise and distortion meter okay so at the moment we have a meter set of 0.03 of a percent so 0.03 is here so this is 0 0.02 0 0.01 this is 0 0.005 of a percent they sort of claim 0.035, which this doesn't quite achieve, it's slightly higher, 
but still it is remarkably good uh, result. If we go, this is with a high pass, uh, a low pass filter of 22 kilohertz audio band. Without it, the figure raises slow, uh, slightly. Intermodulation distortion is less than uh, oh, 0.6, it's about 0.5 of 1%. So that's also a very good result. And finally, if we kill all that and do a noise of between uh, 20 and 20 kilohertz, it, uh, it goes also, you know, in a territory of less than 0.01 of a percent. So it's, it's uh, very nice, very nicely executed a player. And uh, let me show you one other thing which is quite interesting. Even though it's based on a Sony servo it, uh, and has a Sony pickup, it doesn't have any adjustments. And, uh, and look at this. If we look at the laser power, it only goes maximum to about 50 microwatts and normally it's sort of um, it, it got come up it comes up to there which is a hundred microwatts so it's it works remarkably well at half the laser power and when I say remarkably well let me show you something again this is my real test disc. The other one is sort of uh, from the 80s that I normally use. Only goes to 0.9 of a millimeter. This one goes to 3 millimeters. This is um, this guy I bought recently. And the Red Book standard is only 0.9. So if, if, if a city player plays 0.9, it means it meets specifications. So I'll start here at the track 25 which is two and a half millimeters and uh, we go 25 it will now gather pace or lost uh, focus but focus or not you can hear that it plays well and we can go now to 26 which is 2.6 millimeter 27 28, 29, and this is all with half the power of other, you see that doesn't play well. So let's go to the other test which is uh, 55, this is a painted black line of 2.5 millimeters, you can see track 55 there, and that handles it well, 56, 2.6 millimeter, 2.7, 2.8, 2 2.9, almost gets to 3 millimeters. It does. So, and all that with half the power of other players. So, um, remarkable good execution, very little noise, good parts. You know, great player. I have to actually hook it up now to my um, number one system and see how it sounds. Well, it will be interesting to, to now compare it to the Radia 861. Well, thank you very much for your time and until the next one. Bye-bye.